How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle, and today I'm really excited because we are going to be talking about Jacob's Ladder from 1990, directed by Adrian Lin, and stars Tim Robbins, Elizabeth Pinna, and Danny Alejo. And in addition to that cast, you also get uh, some minor roles from actors that would go on to be pretty famous. Uh, Jason Alexander, who you guys know as George from Seinfeld, has a small role in this movie uh, before he was really uh, famous. Um, you also got to see Jason Alexander in The Burning, which we have covered on this channel before. So a cool idea that the uh, some of the Seinfeld actors were in horror movies before the show. Um, you also get a young kid in this movie played by Macaulay Culkin, who you guys know from the Home Alone movies. So pretty cool to see Jason Alexander, Macaulay Culkin before they're famous in a, a fun, creepy horror movie. Now, uh, this movie, nowadays, a lot of you guys know this as one of the uh, chief inspirations for the Silent Hill video games, and you really do see that. The uh, crazy, messed up creature design, even though it's a lot more subtle in the movie than it would be in the games later, it is here. But more than that is understanding a character with a crazy backstory through revelations in this creepy horror movie plot. The way that Jacob is handled in this movie is a lot of the way that Silent Hill characters' backstories are handled and revealed with, you know, messed up uh, things behind them. And it is really cool to see that, and it's one of the things that keeps this story really, really interesting, even though they aren't showing you monsters all the time. There are definitely creepy monsters in this movie, but it's not just a creepy monster show, it's understanding Jacob and how he thinks and the world around him and his backstory. Um, on the back, I really do like uh, the tagline they put. The most frightening thing about Jacob Singer's nightmare is that he isn't dreaming. <laughs> really really great way to set up this movie. I um, This is one of those movies that is among my personal favorites. I really, really do love this movie, and I'm actually surprised I haven't talked about it on this channel yet, and I really needed to, to change that. Um, there are several movies, actually, that I really, really do like that I haven't made a review for yet, and I really need to get on that. So, starting here with uh, Jacob's Ladder, getting to to some of my personal favorites. Um, so without further ado, let's just uh, dive right into the plot. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want to, you know, say my piece on a few plot points and make sure you guys have a basic understanding as to what the movie's about. So let's go ahead and uh, jump right in. We meet our main character, uh, Jacob Singer, uh, during the Vietnam War, and he's there. Uh, hanging out with his friends, and you get a good sense of camaraderie, camaraderie amongst this group, and they feel like real people, when all of a sudden, a bunch of people start to ambush the camp. They're under attack. But Jacob Singer notices something. Before the attack, several people start convulsing and dying. So, before the enemy attacked, right before, some of the people started dying of a mysterious, unknown reason. So, What's up there? Well, we don't know. We cut to the present, and we find that Jacob Singer is out of the war, and he's back home in New York. Now, he's actually not just Jacob Singer, he's Dr. Jacob Singer, but after the war, things had gotten so heavy that he doesn't really want to think. So he's actually become a postman. He's taken a job that's well below his education because he can't apply himself anymore after the trauma that he's been through. So a, a pretty messed up situation. But on top of that, it's revealed that uh, him and his wife actually lost a child before he left for war. And now that he's back home, him and his wife are separated and he's living with a new girlfriend now, uh, someone who he had worked with at the post office and had a big crush on. So the logical place to uh, move on to after your wife kicks you out. And um, you see he's trying to to live, but you can tell quite, uh, quite quickly off the bat that this guy has some problems and his life is far from being in a perfect state. 
But that's just the beginning of it. You see, he lives in New York City, creepy, run-down, grungy New York City, and he's starting to see people that are a little off and a little different. You actually see uh, the first instance of this. He's on the subway. He's fallen asleep. He wakes up, and he asks an old lady, like, is what station are we at? And she just stares and doesn't respond. Now, that in and of itself is really weird, but he turns to see this other guy, a guy in a big black coat where it's so big you can't really understand, you know, who he is under there because it's all it looks like a lump of clothes. But then a little creepy tail appears to be poking out of the folds, which scares Jacob and he gets out of there. And as he's walking around New York City trying to live his life, more and more of these creepy creatures who he starts to call demons, even though he doesn't really know what they are, start to appear, you know, and he'll see them, and they're kept really low-key for a lot of this movie, like a car will drive by, and you can barely see who's in the car, because, you know, it's a car driving by, it's really fast, or a train or something, and you get this brief look at some really disturbing creature, but it goes by fast enough, just fast enough where you can't make out too much of what's going on, but there's several other weird and strange people that he sees in like brief flashes or out of the corner of his eye, and it's really um, this great atmosphere, a grungy, run-down city, and at the very edges these creatures start to come in, and slowly they'll get more and more prevalent and more and more aggressive, and the way these creatures are treated is very, very good. A subtle creature that gets bigger and bigger really, really do love this, and they're all messed up and creepy looking. At later points in the movie, you do get to see them more. There's a scene where there's people dancing that quite famously gets pretty, uh, pretty dark. And then, of course, the hospital scene later on, which is grade-A creepy. So these do amount to something. It's not like they're kept in the shadows the whole movie. But I love the introduction, the way they creep up before they become something big and terrifying. Uh, this movie, you also do get the introduction of something that would become a horror trope later. Uh, he sees a guy, and he moves his head really fast, and of course it's all sped up. And this weird little shaky head thing, you know, so he's standing there, and it's just the head, and it's moving around really fast. You would see that in horror movies later. This is the one where it came from. Whenever you see that, it's usually they're trying to do what this movie does. And this is an example of a, a horror movie trope where the first one did it right and it's really cool in Jacob's Ladder. But I feel like whenever anyone tries to mimic this, I don't know how, uh, maybe they show it too long or something, uh, whenever they mimic this, it never works. But if you want to see Shaky Head done right, Jacob's Ladder is where it came from and it's why people keep trying to mimic it. Uh, but anyway, New York really creepy, great, great monsters, but he's starting to see these things. He feels more and more attacked, and he eventually makes contact with some of his old army buddies and finds that he's not the only one. Several other people are seeing this. Now, bear in mind how in the past Jacob saw some people convulsing before the attack. What if what if the army did something to Jacob, and that's why he's seeing all this crazy messed up stuff? So you get, in addition to the creepy monsters, you get a little bit of a conspiracy element with this movie? A military conspiracy? Are they experimenting on soldiers? Is that what's up? Maybe. We don't know. And you get an element of mystery behind this? And I do want to say to everyone who says, oh, yeah, military, drugs, whatever, it's not that simple. It's not going to be just that easy of a revelation. And there is a whole lot of of plot behind this. And you do you really you really don't know what's going on. You know, it's not like, oh it's just this or oh it's just that. There's several different layers. It's honestly one of the few movies where the symbolism is as deep as say like what you might get from a book. You know, there's several little things to the point where it's like several characters in here have biblical names. What are they what are they trying to go for? One of the main characters is uh 
is Jezebel. That should be a, a red flag there. And, you know, Jacob and Sarah, there, there's several things to read into there. But also, as you get to understand what these creatures are, which I won't spoil for you, it's a really interesting revelation that I don't think I've really seen before. And it, it really is, when you understand what's going on, I loved the, the revelation, but also re-watching the movie, when you see it again and you know what's happening, you can take little bits here and there and go, oh, that's what that was about. That's why that is. And, you know, little throwaway lines. Oh, I understand that now. And there's several little tiny clues all scattered throughout this movie. And it's fun to watch just on a base level. But if you want to really dig in and try to understand, and on top of all that, you do get a few elements of shifting timelines. You know, he's there with his new girlfriend in the present, but then he might go to sleep and wake up and be with his wife pre-war. And you do get that sense of shifting timelines, shifting realities, what's going on, and the monsters making the world crumble in. It is just really eerie and mysterious. And that's really what I want to stress. The monsters, the dark forces creeping in, that's really cool, but the idea of what's Jacob's backstory, what's eating at him, what does he need to uncover, and, you know, where is he, you know, because you do get the shifting timelines and realities, you know, and that's why I really love the quote on the back. The most frightening thing about Jacob Singer's nightmare is that he isn't dreaming. This really does feel like a creepy nightmare, but what is it? And I really really do love this movie. It's a little art housey, but that being said, uh, it actually does tie things up pretty nicely by the end. It's not one of those where you watch the movie and you go, huh, what was that all about? Like, by the end, you know the gist of what's going on, but if you want to analyze it more, you're welcome to do so, which I do like, that it has everything in a nice bow that you can watch it on a quick first watch, understand it, and like it. But if you want to dive deeper, if you want to understand more, there is room to analyze this movie. It's very deep, very layered, and I really do love this. But I might just be rambling. I might just be some crazy guy who really loves this movie. But if you haven't seen it yet, go watch it. Easily one of the top 100 horror movies of all time, and I'd say it probably ranks pretty high up. But don't be expecting constant jump scares. Don't be expecting an overabundance of creatures. Uh, really psychological, but there are creatures. So that is pretty cool. Anyway, I don't want to ramble any further. I don't want to give too much away. Go watch this movie, though. It's a little art housey. If that's not your thing, still try to watch it. But really, definitely recommend this. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, uh, thank you. You're really helping this channel out. I'll put a relevant playlist on the bottom if you guys want to see more. You can click there and see more. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.